All right, let's do it. Let's answer your questions about the .NET dependency injection service for ASP.NET Core, .NET MAUI, and so much more, and answer the question, singleton or transient? Tune in to find out which one to use. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno, and I'm back today talking about the built-in dependency injection service inside of .NET. Now, I get questions all the time because a lot of .NET MAUI developers are brand new to the built-in dependency injection service. If you're using ASP.NET Core for a long time, this may be very common and familiar to you. But there are many things, if you're just getting started with .NET, that are really important, which is all about state management and what it means to register dependencies and register them as a singleton or a transient. Now I'm gonna break down exactly what that means, but if you're brand new to the .NET dependency injection service, I have great videos right up over there talking about all why I love it and how it works really elegantly with .NET MAUI. Now I'm gonna use a .NET MAUI application today to demo this off, but of course you could be using and building any .NET application. You could also be using other dependency injection services that are out there, and they all have very, very similar contracts when it comes to that singleton transient approach. But let's get into it. Singleton, it's a single ton. No, it's a single, uh, basically, instance of whatever you register. If you have a page, a view model, or a service, what it means is that when you register it as a singleton, that will be kept around basically as a global in a memory. So when you register it and you create it for the first time and you get it back, the next time you request it, it will then go ahead and give you the same instance of it back. So for example, if you had increased the count of a counter to four in some state and you navigate it back and you navigate it forward and you register that view model as a singleton, you would get that same exact one back. Now, on the other hand, a transient is completely opposite. What this means is that when you register that object, whatever it is, and you request it, every time you request it, you will get a new one back every single time. So it's not going to keep the state around. That's really great if you're, great if you're navigating to pages and you want to pass a different object and state around. You're going to want to go ahead and use that transient. But I have a good demo here that kind of walks through all the different approaches and some sort of odd edge cases that you may not suspect. So let's take a look. Now I've created an absolutely astonishing looking application. Look at it, it has a button that says navigate. Now this navigate is a big old button here in a .NET MAUI application. And when you click on it, it simply goes to the counter page using shell. Now that counter page, looks like this. It has a .NET bot on it, a count, an increase count and a change background button. This counter page will come in and it does a few things. It simply does a data binding here to the count. And then it has a button that's going to call the increase count command. And then here is a button that is going to be specific, not to the view model where those data bindings are, but to the actual page to change the background color. So we can see here in the code behind is that when we go in and create the page, when a page is created, a new instance of it is created, the counter view model will be automatically passed down to us. Now that will be resolved from the dependency injection service based on if it's a singleton or a transient. We'll take a look at that. Now I have a button here that when I click on it, changes the color to orange. Boom. And that's cool because that's going to be to the instance of the page. Now the counter view model that's injected is very simple. I'm using the .NET community toolkit for MVVM that enables me to create this observable property of count and a relay command of increase count. So when I click on that, it increases the count and boom, 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 boom. It totally works. Now in this instance here, what we can see is that I've registered both the counter page and the counter view model as singletons. So what this means is if I navigate back and I navigate forward, both the page and the view model are kept in state in memory. Pretty cool. Now, let's say we wanted to change this up. Let's say we wanted to change this to add transient for the page. 
In this instance, what we would expect to have happen is that every single time I go ahead and navigate, a new page is created for me. But that counter view model is a singleton, so it'd be the same exact singleton every single time of the view model. So if I navigate, I'll increase the count to let's say five, change the background color, navigate back. Now if I navigate again, the page should be new, but the view model shouldn't. And there we go. Background color is white and the count is set to five because the view model was already in that global registry in the dependency injection service. So the dependency service automatically held on to it for us. So there we go. If I increase it again, go back, navigate again, seven, the same exact view model comes back. Now let's do the other one here, the opposite, add transient and transient. This is really good when you are navigating to detail pages uh, because you're probably gonna have, the user's gonna click on different pages and they might represent and show different pieces of data. For example, or you might have a login page that's only shown once. In this instance, we're gonna navigate, increase the count, change the background color. If I navigate back, we ideally should see a white background and count set to zero. New page, new view model. Boom. Now here's a tricky one. Pop question. Pop trick question? What happens if I do a little bit of the opposite here? I add the counter page as a singleton, but leave the view model as a transient. So this means every time I navigate, a new counter page would be created for me. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to navigate, increase the count, change background, go back. Now here, since the counter page is a singleton, I'll get the same counter page back, but what's going to happen? Am I going to get a new view model or the existing view model? Hmm. The existing view model. Now, the reason I got the existing view model, even though here it is add transient, you have to remember that that counter page was already in memory. It was already created, already had instance to that view model. So the constructor did not get called again. So remember, it is when you are requesting from the services, from that dependency service, when you're requesting something back, that's when it's going to determine, do I create a new one or do I return that global one back to them? So that's the difference there. So when should you use what? Well, I personally like to register most things as transient. Some people are transient everything. Well, it depends. If the main part of my application is um, tabs or a flyout menu, I like to make those singletons, especially the ones that are going to be used over and over again. Else, whenever they navigate around or they do different things, if they fall out of memory, then it'll have to go off, create network connection, download stuff back and forth. And I don't like that. So I register those as singletons. Now, whenever I navigate and it's a new page with different types of information that I'm going to be presenting on it, I registered those as transient. There's a bunch of cool uh, extension methods that you can create that'll sort of automatically do this stuff. Um, there's different ways of, of really using that dependency service, a lot of cool packages out there. But take a look at my other videos about how I set this up. I'll put this exact um, demo inside of my GitHub and I'll put links down there at the bottom. Hope that you found this video helpful of breaking down that singleton versus transient problem uh, that you may have when in doubt probably register a singleton. Um, but you know, if you are having hundreds of and hundreds of pages, it may be best to think about, do I really need all 100 pages in memory all the time, or just the main ones that my users are going to use? Like I said, hope this has been super helpful. If you have any questions, leave them below, but don't forget if you're here for the very first time or here for the hundredth time, don't forget to hit that like button. It super helps the YouTube algorithm of goodness um, to recommend this video to others here on YouTube. And don't forget to jam on that subscribe button because it notifies you every time I put out a video or right here on YouTube. Hope you have an amazing day. Enjoy this video. Until the next one, thanks for watching.